Hello and welcome my peaches filled with wasps. How you doing this wonderful day? It's Super John Bombo here and I worked really, really hard on this video for you guys. I hope it's going to be one of the best videos that you've seen all week, all month, maybe even all freaking. Well, I guess the month is a year, right? Well, pretty close. Well, hopefully the best thing you've ever seen. Alright, we have a surprise for you guys. Now, the big question is, is how do you make the most money in Blues TD6? And I recently made a video showing off my druid army and my farm combo and made mad delicious monies. So I'm finally going to give you guys like a real science experiment to sort of test out how we're going to make the most money. Now, this is just a quick example of one test we're going to do here. We made $170,000 before we got to round 60. But we've got more tests to do. We've got... Obviously, there's just the regular farm test. There's the druid test. Think of any other ways that you could possibly make money in here. There's more than just one way to make money in combination with farms. I think the best way to start off is almost always farms. But once you get going, there's a lot of different options for us. So we need to figure out which one is going to be the best option for us. Or which one is just honestly the best option. Snipers? Are they actually going to be a reasonable way to make money in Bloons TD6? Well, we're about to frickin' find out. Uh, I was actually a little bit surprised at how well some of these guys did. So, uh, snipers in combination with farms was pretty delicious. Uh, we even tried a, uh, favored trades, a, a 003 and 004 boats, even with a fifth tier in the middle of all of that, as interesting as that was, making reasonable, amount of mo reasonable amounts of money over here. I was, again, very surprised at what we came up with at the very end of all of this. But I want to show you guys what we're going to get into. And I just want you guys to have a prediction of what you think is going to be the best option to make money in Bloons TD6. Even when as far as going with a bank option for you guys. Alright, I know, I know. I normally don't do banks. I just kind of stay away from them in most situations. But I wanted to give you guys the benefit of the doubt. I wanted to give you guys the banks and test them out and see what we could do if we do them literally perfect. So you guys are going to see just about the perfect bank play, perfectest bank play of all freaking time. With that all being said, let's get going in here. So, we're going to start off. One thing I want to talk to you guys about is the fact that uh, I used a little bit of my own my own tang when I went doing these strategies, right? I think that no matter what, if you're building towers that can sort of pop balloons, you might not need to build as much defense. Or, if you can just spam as many farms as you can by building the best towers you can, that's obviously the best option for us. So for in this example, I used Adora, which is by far my favorite hero in the game. As you guys know, I love her. She's... Oh, so beautiful. Oh, so pretty to look at. Oh, so amazing to watch her destroy all these stupid balloons. But in the meantime, we can also farm. So all we're doing is just hardcore farming. Now, if you guys don't know, starting off your game, you almost always want to get 2-0 farms. So get as many 2-0 farms as you can. Uh, one other thing that I want to point out is that I tried to limit the amount of um, uh, differences between these. Now, of course, you can't limit every difference because every game is going to be slightly different based on how much money you're making and how much popping power you have and what other extra towers you have. But I tried to limit, uh, limit the differences as much as I possibly could. Alright, again, not perfect, but I think I did a fairly good job overall of limiting these differences and making it as fair as I possibly can, right? So, uh, and again, pushing the game to its limit, even if I lost some lives in here, I thought that that was okay. I tried not to lose any, but I thought it was okay. So in this strategy, the way we're going to do is we're going to try and get as many 2-0 uh, farms as we possibly can, then we switch over into 3-2 farms, so that's actually an efficient farm, by the way. 3-2s are, uh, fairly efficient. Um more efficient than three zeros, actually. But then that's, of course, going to lead you into wanting to get fourth tier farms. So soon, after you get a bunch of third tiers just like this, you're going to want to jump into those other guys. This is, again, just basically all top fat path farm action. Three twos, I accidentally got one three zero two, like, alright, that might affect my gameplay a little bit, but, like, not much, let's be honest here. As far as defense goes, man, I was actually really surprised at how well this was doing. One fourth tier ninja, one Adora, with my, uh, uh, alchemist going in here, not even a fourth tier alchemist at this point, and, like, the balloons aren't doing anything to us. And you can see the money just starting to fly in here. This is, again, just a base farm strategy, just being a little bit greedy up in here. Nothing special, um, nothing crazy, just playing the game. Uh, another thing that I should point out is that we are playing on medium right now, guys. So, yeah, I know. 
it's one of those things that like you could play on hard or unpoppable, make it more difficult on yourself. But I feel like in just going for the most money possible, let's just have some fun playing medium. I mean, that's what the, the base rate of the cost of the everything is supposed to be anyways. Uh, if you guys don't know that, the base is not hard. The base is actually medium. The numbers make way more sense on medium than they do on hard and stuff like that. If you just look at the prices, like... Super Monkey, 2,500, Ninja, 500, Alchemist, 550. Like, you get those weird, crazy numbers when you end up switching over to uh, hard and stuff like that. So jumping up to round 57 already, we've got uh, a crap ton of... We got, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of these 4th tier farms now. I'm going to go all the way up. Now we start selling. We want to see how much money do we get at the end of the game. We do sell everything that we have, except for our lonely little farmer there. We get about $170,000! Oh, that's a lot of money. That is. But I guess the question is, is can we make more money? Now, the reason why this popped up into my brain, the reason why I thought of this idea, was mostly because I always think that the best way to make money is going to be the druids here. So I wanted to show you guys that second. So I want to compare just basic farms to basic farms in combination with my middle path druids. This is a fourth tier ability druid. If you guys have not seen this strategy before, oh my god, you need to pay attention right now. This is amazing. It's really cool. It's really fun. It works amazingly, and I highly recommend this. What you're going to do is you're going to build a couple of these middle path druids. Get a couple farms going first. And one thing again you're going to notice, I took a little bit of uh, my own ability here, and I decided to go for zero zero farms to start off the game. Not two zeros, or three zeros, or three twos, or anything like that. Because it, it depends on the amount, the amount of farms, not the level of the farms, to make your druids do a better job with their middle path jungle bounty. The way the jungle bounty works, though, is the more farms you have around yourself, the more money you're going to make off of an ability. So at this point, we're making $1,250 per ability, every single druid, uh, and we could usually use these abilities multiple times per round. You can see how this gets kind of crazy very, very fast. So we start off with just a bunch of just base farms. We don't need to do anything special with them. But we don't want to go crazy with the druids and kind of just overflow the entire map with um, millions of druids. So I sort of just got a little bit lazy. You know, this is like a realistic example, though, of what we would do. We would probably build one farmer, one good set of druids, and one good set of farms. We probably wouldn't overlay them all over the entire screen, admittedly. So after all this was started to get going in here, you can tell that we're making a good amount of money. We got our six druids going in here, kind, kind of like trying to use our abilities as constantly as we possibly can. Um, one thing that I will say, it wasn't perfect. If I got like sentry bots going over there or something like that, like that would be perfect. But as it currently lies, this is pretty good, man. Um, I did I did the best that I could. I missed a couple, t couple abilities here and there, but overall, I was pretty much on top of it. I am actually here the entire time paying attention, clicking buttons nonstop for this like hour and a half, guys. This is how long it took me to just to record this content. So if you, if you guys do want to make sure you press that like button for me, if you want to subscribe, man. Please do that right now, man. It's so, so easy for you, and it makes me so, so happy. I know there's a lot of you guys that watch my videos that don't subscribe, and I don't know why. But it does matter to me. Maybe it doesn't matter to you. Maybe you can help me out anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So that all being said, um... I went with a very similar strategy as far as popping the balloons goes. I went with my ninja, I went with a Dora, I went with an alchemist on this, but I didn't need anything else. Uh, the druids were actually doing the most of the rest of the damage here. Now there's one other thing that you really want to do when doing this uh, strategy, and that's try to get your fifth tier... Uh, excuse me, okay, so first of all, $300,000, man, that's what we ended up with here with our druids. But one other thing you want to try and get is a uh, bottom path third tier heli pilot. Put it in the very front, stop the Moab class blooms between around 50 and 60, and you're going to be making extra money because the rounds last longer, you get to use the abilities more often. You're going to see I'm going to try this with other towers, but it really just doesn't work. And I'll show you why it only works with just those druids, and that's it. But $300,000, that's almost double of just base farms. Like, this is what I'm talking about, man. That is amazing. Amazing. All right, now moving on. And now, this is more of an out-of-the-box strategy. Let's be honest with each other. Like, when you, look at, when you look at snipers, you're not thinking money. You're not thinking, these are my money towers. These are going to be making me bank over here. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Uh, the way it works is you think of them as sort of a, a slight popping power Who uses them in the first place? I mean, let's be honest here. But you're thinking of them as like a slight popping power tower here that also is going to make you money. And that's what's different about some of these other towers that make you money is like they're just kind of money makers. They don't really attack much, 
even though they might be able to. I mean, this is a $7,200 upgrade here, uh, just to get this ability going, just to pop da pop down, uh, you know, uh, $800 uh, to $1,000 here every single time we use it. That's not very much at all. Uh, I mean, just like just thinking about it, like comparing that to a fourth-tier uh, druid. I mean, we're spending less on a druid than a sniper. I think getting just about the same amount of popping power, if not more popping power. And if you could just kind of put a couple farms around him, like, you're making a lot of money. So one thing that I did do here is I didn't go for very many extra farms because I can always buy more snipers. It's always going to give me more popping power. It's always going to give me the ability to get more uh, abilities going over here. I felt like it was worth it just to kind of pile these guys up. So that's what I did. Uh, another thing that you should note about these snipers is the fact that uh, they are zero... Three twos for the most part, with a couple, I think one, maybe two, two three zeros. So they're all bouncing bullet, <laughs> um, mostly faster firings, but I got a couple of the top paths so I can actually kind of chop through the stronger blues. Don't know really which one's more efficient to be straight with you. I would think that bouncing bullet works better with lower tier balloons um, and leaving them on first with like faster speed rather than any other way we can do it. But anyways, after all is said and done, we ended up with a measly $91,000. No, it's not good. That's not good at all. Uh, yeah, guys, that was... No, that was just bad. That's not the way we want to do it. Uh, stay away from the snipers if you're trying to make them a moneymaker. It just don't work. So again, keep in mind that I did do a very similar starting strategy with all of these. With the Buccaneers over here, I've got farms in the bottom right corner here. Uh, that's to get me started in here. Just starting off merchantmen is not going to be efficient. Alright, I just want to be straight with you guys. Just starting off snipers, not going to be efficient. You need to kind of work your way up and make it the most efficient you can by kind of getting the money flowing and then sort of switching into uh, another strategy. So, with the merchantmen, one thing that I got to note is obviously we're not on a big water map. We got a spot where we can fit, you know, what, 10, 10 boats maybe at best. Um, there's are more maps where you can fit more water on them. And I picked this map in particular to start off because it's a reasonable amount of water. This is the amount of water that you would see on most maps. Probably even more than you'd see on most maps. So I didn't feel bad about giving me this just this little puddle right here because this is the average amount of water we're going to see. There's very few maps where you're going to get more water than this besides maps like uh, the island. And uh, is that what it's called? I don't remember the name of it. Uh, <laughs> maps like the island and stuff like that, like uh, uh, Archipelago. That's it. Uh, you know, what else do you got? Not much. Not much at all. So I didn't feel bad about doing this, but we ended up getting uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It looks like 8 boats in here, all up to 4th tier. I started kind of uh, switching into farms right after that. You know, once you max out on your money, you switch over into something else. Makes sense. We're always spending our money here. We do truly want to max out. Another thing you're going to notice is that I actually did get a little bit of attack power on these guys. So I used them for their benefit. Um, I basically got a couple of grape shots in here. They've got camera detection. I got them for the grape shot and a little bit of extra uh, lead popping power and a little bit of balloon popping power with the fire shots as well. I ended up getting a fifth tier in here to increase the amount of money we're making to $660 per boat. Not sure if it was worth it with this few boats. Um, I did not do the math on it, but I think it's not worth it until you get something like 12 boats, if I remember correctly. Um, feel free to correct me on that. But in the end, I was actually pleasantly surprised with what we got here. Uh, not the worst. I thought we were going to do worse than the regular farms, but we surprisingly didn't! We got more than just the regular farms with Buccaneers. Very interesting. $181,000. Wonderful. Alright, guys. So now here it is. We're going to go for the Benjamin Bank strategy. Uh, I, I know what you guys are thinking here. First of all, Chris, you need to use Benjamin. If you're not using Benjamin during your bank strategy, you're obviously a complete and utter noob. And I'll be straight with you. My first thought process was not to use Benjamin. Um, I actually wasn't even going to use Benjamin. And then I realized something. I realized that if I try to do banks just like this, I actually kind of suck. So this was my first try when I was using banks. Overfarmed a little bit. And I lost. So, now we're here with Benjamin! Yeah! We switched it up! Alright, just for you guys. Your My loss is your benefit. <laughs> we're switching back over to Benjamin. Uh, making us some extra cash flow. This is the reason why we did it. Um, he's supposed to make your banks better, basically. Alright. Um, anyways. Uh, 
struggling a little bit in round 28 here. I forgot to get lead popping power because I don't have a Dora. I just kind of forget sometimes. Uh, so I had to get more popping power now that I have Benjamin. I got more money from him. But now I need to get more uh, popping power in other ways. So I, saw, I went for like the cheapest popping power I can think of. A heli pilot. We're sort of struggling here. Obviously almost losing to the balloons at this point. Barely hanging on, trying to make the money from the banks here, man. Trying to collect them as efficiently as I possibly can. This is key, guys. I want to be efficient with this, all right? You're going to notice that I'm going to be very, very, um, you know, uh, clickety. I'm just clicking all over the place with my, with my mouse here to try and get as many banks covered as I possibly can. <sighs> and I'm struggling. I'm not going to lie. I'm struggling. But you got to pay attention to these banks. It sucks. Because if you start off uh, with a clear zero money in the banks thing you can just sort of collect it after 10 rounds and feel good about yourself collect all get 40 grand and like 50 grand or something like that with just these five banks that's pretty sweet but it makes it so it's worth less so i wanted to be as efficient as i possibly could literally guys as efficient as i possibly can i check these guys over and over and over and over again uh i get a bunch of two three monkey banks by the way i'm not sure anymore whether or not two threes are actually going to be faster or more money than zero threes but i think that they are i'm like fairly confident about that uh, at least when the game first came out i tested it out uh and now i'm still sure that i'm pretty sure that it's still the same way but i don't know for for sure 100 percent feel free to correct me if uh if i'm wrong on that but it's sort of irrelevant i think that most people are probably going to buy two three banks anyways so it's just kind of worth it to go for it uh, just to spend your money to make some money, right? So it's kind of cool to actually look at. It's like if I just collected it all right now, I'd have $36,000. But again, not the best way to do it. You probably want to wait. Um, banks are interesting because the way they work is you're going to make interest off of the money inside of your bank. So what you want to do is you want to wait until they get to that $9,500 mark uh, or at least like $9,000. Um, if they're over 9000 and then, uh, you know, you, you, you collect here, it's going to start making money and you're going to start kind of getting the money back already. But, but again, banks are confusing because you make all your money at once. It's not a slow in like increase in money like normal farms are. We can just sort of make money, make money, make money, slowly buy things over time. It's just like 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand in your face, throw it at you. And then for a little while, like nothing. All right, just watch it. See what happens. Now, I really wish that there was a visual change on the bank when it got full. Um, the money started, stopped shaking, or like the money, the farm turned white or turned red or something like that. I would love it. Uh, but right now, at this point, you just got to look at it every single second. That's kind of lame, to be straight with you. I mean, I, I, the reason why I don't use banks is mainly because it's hard. Uh, you really have to pay attention and think about it. Like, when is that bank going to be done? And then if you don't collect it for two or three rounds, it's already inefficient. It's not an efficient way to make money anymore. Kind of sucks. So if you actually kind of look at this, I'm like, wow, like this is actually a lot of freaking banks here already on round 50, man. Woo! So uh, another thing that I should point out is that at this point, I was thinking, well, should I do with some sort of heli pilot? Should I try and keep the balloons on the screen for longer like I did with the druids? Why didn't I do that with any of my other strategies? Well, I did it with the snipers. But what you got to realize is snipers have infinite uh, attack range. And even if I stalled the Moab glass balloon, the snipers were going to kill it. I couldn't do it on there. Um, with almost every other, uh, and that was the only ability, and almost with every other way that we could do this, uh, we end up with um, some sort of, um, oh man, I lost my train of thought here for a second. <laughs> uh, uh, with every other way that we can do this, they're not abilities. They're just regular attack um, towers. And that means that they're going to make the same amount of money whether the round lasts 30 seconds, 3 seconds, or 3 minutes. So they're a base rate per round. That's how farms work. That's how banks work. Um, that's how a lot of these guys work. It's very rare, and in this case, in this scenario, the only example that's actually going to work for us to slow these guys down is the druid. So I guess after all is said and done, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. People always tell me the most efficient, the best way to farm is definitely 100% Benjamin. He's, an, he's a, a hero that literally makes you money with banks. They work together well. If you pay attention to them, you're going to be making billions of dollars. There's no possible way you could ever make more money than this. We're going to find out right now, right here, if this is the case, if this is really true. Holy crap. Of course, if we survive, get that game let pop, Parker's. 
After this BFB, we're going to collect all this money. Watch the money that flows into our pockets here, guys. It's going to be about $100,000. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Ready? Watch this. Ready? Watch this. Hundred thousand dollars but buy them just like that sell all this stuff will we make it up to 300,000 K rid of thousand or will we be less than the Druids and after all is said and done the Druids are the champions of the world if you're gonna go for money if you truly want to get the best money best bang for your buck go for them Druids guys they are the best thanks so much for watching have a super duper delicious day